All right, the title of our notes today is uh, Evaluating Trig Functions. Like, how do you find the sine of a certain angle or cosine of a certain angle without a calculus? Okay. Um, so I'm going to give a little bit of just reminders to us. Uh, so first of all, we're going to want to remember our two special right triangles. Let's write them down in our notes. Uh, so they are, we got our 30, 60, 90. And we we remember the one, or we we memorize the one that had a hypotenuse of one. You guys remember what the side length across from thirty was? One half, and across from sixty was square root of three over two. Okay. Um, and then our other special right triangle was the forty five forty five ninety. With a hypotenuse of one. And do you remember that's isosceles, so both sides, both legs are the same length. Do you remember what that was? Square root two or two. Okay. Um, also, we defined what sine and cosine were um, by taking a generic right triangle with a hypotenuse of 1, and if we let this angle be theta, what was the sine of theta? Like how did, what, what is the definition of a sine? Like what is a sine of an angle? It's the side length across from that angle when the hypotenuse is 1. So it's this, it's this length right here is the sine of theta. And this length right here is the cosine of theta. Okay, uh, So that's how we define sine and cosine. And then remember how we define tangent? What is it? Sine over cosine. So these are some things from last unit that we, we need to remember we're going to bring back today. Okay, so I'm just putting them here at the top of our notes. So if, if you had forgotten that, you can look back at that. Right? Okay, so we're going to kind of put all of this together with what we were working with yesterday. Um, so in general, we, we ha if I give you some angle theta, right? Uh, let's let's say theta is in the second quadrant, for example, um, and so say theta is pointed right here, and then we draw our right triangle, and then this is our reference angle right in here. Um, well, what happens is we're we're always, we're going to make the hypotenuse always one. And this length here on the bottom will be your x value. x goes left or right. And uh, the height of that triangle will be your y value because y is your vertical, your distance, your vertical distance. Okay. Um, so what is the coordinate of this point right here? X, Y, right? Uh, it's a, a coordinate is how far left you go and, and how far up you go. But let's relate these two pictures together now. Okay. We have a right triangle. The hypotenuse is 1. So what can we say about X and what can we say about Y?
y is across from our angle, right? And so uh, that's going to be the sine of the cosine. This is the sine. And your x value is uh, going to be your cosine. And so that's going to be something that's important here. When, when we're working with a radius or a hypotenuse of 1, your y value will always be your sine. Your x value will always be your cosine. Uh, so this coordinate here is going to end up being the cosine of et, a theta comma the sine of theta. Okay. So with that in mind now, we're going to look at an example here. And we're going to find the sine of negative 30 degrees. The way we're going to find that is we start by drawing our angle in standard position. So here's zero degrees. We're moving clockwise because the angle's negative. So here's negative 30 degrees here. Um, and then we're going to draw a right triangle, make it perpendicular, this, this uh, height perpendicular to the x-axis. Hypotenuse, we're going to label it length 1. Our reference angle is always positive. We're going to put the reference angle in, which would be what? 30. Okay. And so that's about as much as we did on the homework. Um, last night, right? So we're going to take it a step further now and notice that this is a special right triangle. Okay? And so because it's a special right triangle, it's got a, we know the side lengths, right? Um, what's, a, what's the length across from 30 when the hypotenuse is 1? 1 half. And this is going to be root 3 over 2, right? But we're working within a coordinate system. And um, this is our x value. Like, say, say we want to get to this point right here, right? Uh, from 0, 0, I'm going to go to the right root 3 over 2. So should that be positive or negative? Positive. So x is going to be positive root 3 over 2. And then we're going to go down 1 half. So should the y value be positive or negative? Negative. So this is going to be y equals, and so we're going to put negative um, one half in there. Okay. So then I'm ready to finish this off. So this is the sine of negative 30. Sine of negative 30 is your y value, which is negative one half. And we got our answer. So just again, I'll reemphasize, your, your x value is always the cosine of your angle you're after. And the y value is always the sine of the angle you're after. If the hypotenuse length is 1. Okay. Let's try another one. And the cosine of five hundred and seventy degrees. Okay, so first we've got to find out where that is. Uh, so we know this is zero, but we also know we're going to be going around more than once, right? So instead of starting at zero, I'm going to start at 360 because it gets me closer to 570. Um, and so then I'm moving uh, counterclockwise because it's a positive angle. So I'm going to add 90 to 360 and get 450. Uh, 
And I'm gonna add 90 again and I get 540. And I'll add 90 again, I'll get 630. And so 570 is between 540 and 630. Actually, I probably should be closer to 540. Let me fix that a little bit. Okay. Um, so my reference angle is between the terminal side and the x-axis. It's this angle here. It's the acute angle here. And I'm going to draw a, an altitude to create a right triangle. And to find my reference angle, I need to subtract my 570 and my 540 and, what do we, and make it positive. And what do we get? 30 degrees. Okay. And so now hypotenuse, we're always going to make one. Um, what's the x value going to be here? Root 3 over 2? Positive or negative? This time we're on the left side of the graph, so we got to respect the you know the quadrant that we're in. We're in quadrant four, sorry, quadrant three, and so we have to go to, to the negative side of the x's. And then our y value is going to be also negative, negative one half, uh, because everything in quadrant three has a negative x and a negative y value, right? Um, so once you have this, you have everything you need to answer this, probably more than you need, because um, cosine, we've got to remember, is that the x value or the y value in our picture? The x value in our picture. So we're going to write equals x, just to remind ourselves that it's x, and that's equal to negative root 3 over 2. And we've got our answer. So we're finding the sines and cosines without a calculator so far. All right, let's find tangent of negative uh, let's go negative 210. Okay, so I want you, I'm going to give you a little time to set that up, like I have been in, in number one and number two. So what quadrant is negative 210 degrees in? Should be second quadrant, because here's zero degrees. Moving clockwise, this is negative 90 degrees. Negative 180 degrees. Negative 270 degrees. So 210, uh, negative 210 is right over here. OK. Uh, always go to the x-axis perpendicular to the, or your height's perpendicular to the x-axis, so put the 90 degree angle there. And then our reference angle is this angle here with the vertex at 0, 0. It's the difference between negative 210 and negative 180, and it's a positive difference, which is 30 degrees again. Okay. And uh, so then once you have that set up, make the hypotenuse 1. Uh, State what the x value is or this distance here, but I think it could be positive or negative because we're in quadrant two. What's it going to be? What is it? Negative root three over two. And across, this is going to be our y value, which is positive or negative? Positive because it's above the x-axis, positive one half. And then once you have that, that's what you need in your diagram. And when I'm checking your homework, I'm going to be looking for a few things. I'm going to be looking. Okay, so so our 
our first of all, our angle. These are the two sides of your angle. They both need to be at what three that you're working with. Um, and your reference angle that, that goes in there. Um, then for the triangle itself, you want to you want to have that right triangle drawn. And um, I need to see that the hypotenuse is one. I need to see the y value and the x value with the correct positive or negative values there. Um, that's the p that's what I'm going to be looking at for your diagram. Uh, for your work, what you're going to need to show me, uh, so if it's a tangent problem, tangent we learned is sine over cosine, so we're going to write this sine of negative 210 over cosine negative 210. I need that. And then the new part that we're learning is that the sine is the y value. So I'm going to want y and cosine is the x value. And then once you're there, just substitute in those values. So our y was 1 half, and our cosine was negative root 3 over 2, and then simplify that fraction. Okay. So in this case, because both of the smaller denominators are 2 for this bigger fraction, we could multiply the top and bottom by 2, which reduces those fractions. And we end up with 1 over negative root 3. But we learned uh, in unit 1 that we can't leave a radical in the denominator. We're going to have to rationalize that denominator by doing what? Multiply top and bottom by root 3. And we end up with root 3 over 3. And there's a negative in that. And I'm just going to put the negative out in front. And that's my answer. Okay. Um, and so what I have here is what I would expect as the bare minimum work that you could show. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to also set an example for what your homework should look like. Okay. All right. So for number four, I want you to find. The sine, cosine, and tangent of theta equals negative 135 degrees. Go for it. All right, so you start with locating negative 135. We need a really good picture. Uh, and once we have that good picture, it can help us find everything else we need. Uh, so what quadrant are we looking at? The third quadrant. So here's 0. It's a negative degree, so we're going clockwise. So here's negative 90. Here's negative 180. So negative 135, somewhere in between. Draw your right triangle like this, 90 degree angle here, perpendicular there. Uh, here's our reference angle. It's the positive difference between negative 180 and negative 135, which is going to be 45 degrees. Okay. Uh, so then make our hypotenuse 1. And then our x value is going to be what? Negative root 2 over 2. And our y value is going to be negative root 2 over 2. So because we're in quadrant 3, that's why we need to put make x and y negative, because everything in quadrant 3 is negative for x and y. This is the left and below. And then the root 2 over 2 is coming from our special right triangle that we wrote at the top of our notes. It's the 45, 45, 90, right? So that's where those numbers are coming from. Once we have that, then we have everything we need to, to show our work. So we're going to write the sine of negative 135 degrees 
is equal to our y value in our picture, which is negative root 2 over 2. Okay. So that's what I need for sine. For the cosine of negative 135, I want you to state that that's equal to x, and x is also negative root 2 over 2. And then for tangent of negative 135, state our definition. That's the sine over the cosine. which is y over x, which is negative root 2 over 2 divided by negative root 2 over 2. And notice, in this fraction, the numerator and the denominator match each other. Right? So what's it going to equal? 1. Positive 1 or negative 1? Positive, right? So if I have 5 over 5, you know that's 1. This, these are weird numbers, but or irrational numbers, but Still works out the same way. So tangent is equal to one. Okay. So the method that I showed you will help you find any the sine, cosine, or tangent of any angle that has a reference angle of 30, 45, or 60, right? So like every problem that you guys have been working on, if you look at the reference angle, it's either 30, 45, or 60. Because they, they come from those special right triangles, and that's how we're able to deal with them. Um, there are another set of angles that we can find, but we're going to have to use a different method. We're not going to use a reference angle. We're not going to use a right triangle. It's just um, a related method, but a different method. So back to our notes. So what we've seen, what we've been using is a triangle, a right triangle with a hypotenuse of 1. Right? And uh, this is theta in general. and uh, no matter where, what quadrant we're in, uh, we're saying, you know what, this coordinate here, this xy coordinate, gives us a lot of information. It gives us x is the cosine, y is the sine, and um, we can get the tangent by going y over x. Okay, so that becomes important. Um, so if we were to uh, kind of take the triangle away, but leave Leave the hypotenuse there, and and just kind of um, think of it as a spinner. Okay, where where it's stuck at zero zero, but the um, terminal side is able to spin around. And what we'd end up with is a circle with what radius? Radius of one, right? Um, and every point on that circle would be important. Like, you pick any point, like if I pick this point here, let's call that x and y, well, that x is going to be the cosine of, you know, you could you could draw a right triangle within that circle, and you can get a cosine and a sine. You follow what I'm saying? So every point on that circle relates to a sine and cosine of some angle. And so we call this the unit circle. And the word unit is coming from the fact that the radius length is equal to 1. Okay. Now, finding points on this circle is not an easy job um, at all. Right? Uh, if we had 30 degrees, 45, or 60, we can do that because we use our special right triangles. But there are a few points on this circle that we can find and that are easy to find okay um, for example this is a really easy coordinate to find if the radius is one what is it one comma zero because this is zero zero right 
and the radius is one, and I just move to the right one, I don't go up or down, and so my x value is going to be one, my y value is going to be zero. And, and in fact, we can do that with um, any of these points on the x or y axis. They're really easy to find if you realize that the radius is one. And the x value is the cosine of the angle at that position, and the y value is the sine of the angle of that position. So if I give us, we get with number one, number five here. If I say find sine of negative 90 degrees. Okay, so all you need to do is locate it. See if it's in a quadrant or if it's on one of the axes. Here's zero, here's negative 90. And negative 90 falls on the y-axis. So if one of your angles falls on the x or the y-axis, don't draw a triangle, draw a circle uh, with the center at zero, zero, and a radius of one. Draw that unit circle. You can dash it or you could draw a solid circle, doesn't matter. And that point right there, so the radius, um, you know, if you need if you need to remind yourself the radius is one, you can write that. But so this is zero zero, and what's this point going to be if the radius is one? Zero negative one. Okay, uh, so zero is our x value, negative one is the y value, and so the sine of negative ninety is the y value, which is negative one, and I'm done. Okay, so it's not a tough thing to do, right? Once you realize, okay, we could use the unit circle to help us with these. Um, let's try another one. Try to find the cosine of 540 degrees using this method. Everybody have it? What's the cosine of 540 degrees? Negative one. Good. Because you, you first got to find out, well, where is 540, right? So uh, this is zero, but it's also 360. And I keep moving around, add 90, I get 450 here. Add another 90, I get 540. So I, I found 540. It's on the axis, it's not in a quadrant. So don't use a triangle, use a circle. That's the coordinate. And remember, the distance from 0, 0 to any point on that circle is 1. So what's the coordinate of that point? Negative 1, comma 0. And negative 1 is x, 0 is y. And it's cosine of 540, which is your x value. So we get negative 1. Okay. Now, just the, the, I mean, it's fairly simple. The only way, the only real place that people get mixed up on is when you get to fractions. Um, and so, just as a reminder, if I have five over zero, what's that equal to? Okay, so I heard zero. I heard you can't. I heard undefined. Okay, so I'm, I'm hearing some mixed answers. This is undefined, okay? Because you can't divide by zero. Um, what about this one? What is it? This is zero, okay? So when you're dividing, you can divide by any number except by zero. And if you have zero as your denominator, you're gonna have to say, hey, that that is undefined. Um, on the other hand, you could divide zero by something.
anything other than zero, like zero over five is, is going to be zero. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Let me give you one last example, number seven here. Uh, find the tangent of negative 270 degrees. First of all, make sure you went the correct direction. Negative 270 should be on the y-axis at the top, right? Because it's on the y-axis, we're not going to use a triangle to solve this. We're going to use a, the unit circle to help us. And unit circle means the radius is 0, 0 with the center. Sorry, radius is 1 with the center at 0, 0. So what's the coordinate? at that point on the circle at negative 270 degrees. One comma two, is that right? No, that's not right. Because your first value is your x value. That's how far left or right you go. We don't go left or right at all. So zero and up one, right? And so our x value is zero, our y value is one. So tangent, your work should look like this. You write sine of negative 270 over the cosine of negative 270, which in this case is y over x, which is 1 over 0, which is undefined. All right, so just watch out for that undefined one. If you divide by 0, it's undefined. If 0 is at the top, you don't. Okay, so now you have everything you need to do all those problems. Okay, keep working.